All right guys, welcome back to my channel and today I want to take a closer look at my battery backup solution and what can be done to extend the runtime. All right, so Texas had a power issue a few weeks ago and um, it just got me thinking about what if it happened here. And so I'm re-evaluating my battery backup uh, system that I am currently using on my uh, Red Sea Reefer. And currently uh, with full load, I can only get about five to seven minutes of runtime. And so what I need to do is actually be able to extend that um, as long as I can. And the only way to do that is if um, I can start shutting off uh, pumps or lights or heaters that I don't really need running to conserve that battery so that um, it can fully uh, it can fully uh, provide energy to my pumps and let that run as long as I can. Um, ultimately this is not going to be as good as a battery type solution that connects directly to the pump because uh, this battery inside this APC UPS uh, backup um, needs to convert energy and step it up to 120 and then step back down to DC for the actual uh, pumps that's driving the, um, or that's running the tank. And so you get some power loss there. Uh, but the hope here is that uh, currently I'm at about five to seven minutes runtime. And the idea here is to try to see if I can extend that as long as I can with the current um, UPS APC battery backup system to give me enough time to come home wherever I'm at and then uh, turn the generator on and get that going to um, be able to turn back on all the equipments on the tank. And so I have an idea and a theory and I believe this will work, but I'm gonna have to lay everything out and show you what I'm gonna do and then implement it. And hopefully we'll, we can extend that runtime from the bare five, six, seven minutes all the way up to hopefully maybe 20, 30, 40 minutes to one, two hours if possible. So I'm gonna show you what I have so far and then we're gonna to go to my garage. We'll get the whole thing configured, set up, tied into the Apex. Then we'll see if I can extend that runtime. All right, so I am in my garage here and I'm using this wire stripper here and a few other tools here to try to accomplish what I think will work. And so I have this tool here, this wire stripping tool that I'm gonna to use to do some wire stripping. And I, um, it's actually a really neat tool here that it actually cuts in and does a separation for you of the wire and the shielding. So I don't know if it's gonna work, but we will give this a try. And then uh, this is the actual part that I decided to use and it is a uh, little relay. I'm using a standard Apple iPhone charger brick. I have a USB cable that um, I just pulled out of my box of cables. And, uh, and then of course the Neptune breakout box. And I'm gonna use this to um, basically trigger to let the system know if I have power outage. This piece is nothing more than to hold the actual relay so it's gonna go on something like that so that I can mount it to the wall and so the concept is very simple this relay and how it works is that uh, I'm gonna use the 5 volts that's coming out of this charger here I'm gonna use that to turn this on and it's gonna close the uh, contact on this relay. And then uh, what it will do is let the system know or let Apex know by using the breakout box that, hey, you either have power on in the house or the grid is offline. And with that, I could use that to trigger or to disable um, you know, heaters, lightings, uh, pumps that I have running outside for mixing water. And I could use that to pretty much turn everything off and leave on only the essentials. So that is the plan and the idea here. I am pretty confident it'll work, uh, but of course um, we'll have to test this out and see if we can extend the runtime 
on my APC UPS. The relay is um, very straightforward as your typical. And there's three prongs on this side here that you could connect your cables to. Okay. So it is NO for normally open, uh, COM for your main connector that's coming in. And then NC for normally connected. And so what we're gonna do here, here is, we're gonna play around with it and see which way would work best for our setup. Uh, let's look at the other end here. So we have on this side, this is uh, the power that's coming in to turn the relay on and off. Uh, and so we have DC plus and DC minus, and that is your five volt that, uh, that's coming in so that you can turn the relay on. And then we have a trigger, something that will tell this unit uh, to turn on or off. And so you can actually control, and this unit's very unique, in that you can trigger by high or low level trigger. So what you can do is there's an H on this side and there's an L on this side, okay? And what that means is that you can actually move these pins around and tell this unit, and actually it's probably the, uh, the chip right here, you can tell it if you want it to trigger off the positive side of the voltage or the negative side of the voltage. And when I was looking at this pin set up here, we had DC plus here, DC minus here, right? Then in right here. So this is the trigger right here. So are we gonna use a positive voltage to trigger this? Or a negative voltage to trigger this and being that um, in the triggers right here in DC minus is right here I think it will be easier to use a, a, a low-level trigger so that way we could just jump the wire from here to here to turn this relay on and to uh, connect the comp to the normally open I think that's what I'm gonna do here okay uh, and so in order to get that to work we have to pull this out and bridge it with the middle and the outer pin up here and if i do that there and we can also test this to make sure it's doing what i think it's going to do but if we move that over to one slot so that we're connecting the middle pin to this outer left pin here it will be a low level with the l indication right here meaning it's gonna be a low level trigger. And if we move it back, it'll be a high level trigger. So it all depends on how you want this set up. Uh, there really is no right or wrong way to set this piece up. It's just preference. And so for my case, I'm gonna do that. And it'll be more clear once I wire this side up, um, you'll have an understanding of why I did it the way I did it. All right, so first thing is first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have power to this unit right here. And we can do that by cutting this piece here all right so let's do that really quick here cut the tip here off just like that okay and then uh, we're going to strip it so extend this out maybe that much something like that okay pretty well oh, this guy's stuck here all right so I got two leads here and that may or may not be long enough let's do that how about something like that that looks a bit longer there you can see it and we need to strip these two ends right here and this might be a little bit small so let's see how it does here All right, so I have the unit turned on. I have the temperature set to 350 over here. I threw some water on the sponge here so I could do some cleaning of the tip. All right, so I'm gonna clean the tip here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of solder onto, put a little bit of solder onto the leads right here, okay? So let's do that here. Right here, we 
do something like that. Now mind you, if you're doing something like this inside the house or the garage, make sure you have ventilation. This thing really smells. So you gotta make sure you have good airflow uh, in the space you're working in. Go ahead and do the positive side first. And because the hole is pretty big in here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold this. Let's see if I can have it capture this, the diameter of this wire and the lead here. That way, that way this thing's got something to grab onto. Otherwise the lead itself is kind of skinny. So we're gonna do it like this and pop it in that and I need to get another wire to use as trigger all right so closer look let's take a look at this here so we have a positive lead going up to this side you know what I should do here you see how this is sticking out we should actually cut that we don't want anything else touching this. This is your positive five volts. Or what we could do is bend this back in here somehow to get out of the way. But ultimately we'll have to get that fixed, okay? Negative on this side. And then we have this little jumper that jumps over here so that we can have this uh, low level trigger to turn the relay on. All right, so I found an extension cord right here. And what I've done is I actually got this thing wired up the way I want it to be wired up. And we are ready for the test here. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Now, don't know if you can pick that up, but the unit's actually working. You can hear the relay snapping on and off. All right, so this is my Apex Fusion here. And what I have already done was I went through, went ahead, and did some quick programming and did some tests to make sure it works. Um, and so what I have done here is, I went to the uh, lockup here, and um, I pulled down one of these switches. So I'm using uh, switch one, and so what I did was, I grabbed switch one and then I threw it down here. And so I've already done that, and the switch is this one right here, and then I named it grid power and so um, I couldn't add in any more characters so I had to shorten it uh, but if we take a look at this uh, this is uh, telling me that it is the first switch on that base unit of the apex unit itself uh, and so uh, all I did here was renamed it uploaded it and that was it and so I do have the unit plugged in the little uh, device that we created with the uh, iPhone uh, charger and it's currently plugged in so instead of uh, open it is closed now and so this um, is considered normal operating um, based on how we have it hooked up so now what i did the first thing was i went to an email alarm i had added in this line right here if grid power is open then uh, set the alarm to on and so basically all that's saying is if it moves from the closed position to the open that means that power to the little uh, charger um, is no longer present so there that means there's no power from the grid and, and so um, the relay is going to default back to its open position and so of course in apex it's going to show that it's open and so to uh, get it to work across the board with all of my equipment, what I did was I went through each of the equipment and added in that line. Um, so if we look at my main light here, um, I didn't add that in yet, but if we look at the LED bars here, I went ahead and added in this line here. What I'm gonna do is copy that line. So it says, if grid power is open, then off. So I'm going to do the same thing with the main LED light here. Uh, we're going to have to change this over to advance. And I had to do that with all of the other um, equipment. And I'm going to add this line in here. And I'm going to hit upload. 
and that would be it. Uh, and so what I did here was I went through all the stuff that I wanted to turn off if the power went off. And that's basically every device or every outlet that I have in here, uh, minus the gyros, because I'm running the max spec gyro on my setup. And so I left it the way it was. Um, and so in a sense, if power actually went out uh, or went off, um, then everything here would be off except for the flow in my tank, which is the max spec gyro. All right, so I am downstairs and everything is currently running at the moment. So my tank is running, light bars are running, uh, the main Atlantics are running, the unit here is running, I uh, have the calcium reactor going. So everything is running as if it's a normal day. And uh, let's take a look over here. So this is the current runtime that I would get if the power goes out. There's two rows of outlets in here and basically one side or one row of the outlet is uh, dedicated to battery backup devices and the other side is just um, as a surge protector and so I have it plugged into the side that is not battery backed up so that way it'll lose power when uh, the power goes out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug. I have my phone right here. So I should get a warning as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the battery backup, which is this one. All right, so everything shuts off. My whole tank just went offline and the apex is still running, which is exactly what I want. All the pumps are off except for the max spec gyro pump. So these pumps are still running just to keep circulation in here. Now my unit here, my APC is actually on overtime. So the load actually dropped and I am up to about 158 minutes of runtime. So that is a little over two hours, it seems. 182, so it keeps fluctuating. So about three hours runtime. So I did get the warning and it did say that my power went offline. So, so far it's working. I think this is a great option if you still need your Apex running. All right, so I'm gonna turn this unit back on. I'm gonna plug this back into the wall and then <laughs> all right so everything is back on and running all right so there you go that is my setup at the moment this is um how i have it set up currently on my fish tank uh, instead of going just straight battery um i went with the inverter setup with the APC UPS. So if this is something that you think will benefit you, uh, go ahead and check out the description and check out the products or the parts that I use in order to get this working. Again, guys, thank you for stopping by and watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, again, uh, put it down in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.